Uh, you know, I am Belgian. I arrived to Cuenca in 1992, more than 30 years ago, and I lived in Cuenca until 2005. The city of Cuenca in Ecuador uh, has always been a sort of reference for water, and especially water in the Andes, water in mountains. Nature is generous, especially because of the existence of the Paramo ecosystem, which is so important as a water supplier for the city of Cuenca and so many other cities in the Andes and other water uses in the Andes. Uh, I'm now working in Quito for eight years with very similar problems. Nature is generous, but we need to we need to take care of it. No? We have to to conserve these paramos, we have to understand them. When we started to work on, on paramo hydrology 25 years ago here in the University of Cuenca, I am so happy I was at the very beginning of what is now such a amazing research group in in water security and hydrology and uh, integrated catchment management. So happy to have been uh, somehow uh, yeah. present in the setup of that. Um, when we started there, we didn't, we knew that the Paramo was an excellent water source, but we really didn't understand why, no? Uh, and how it worked and which characteristics of that mechanism we have to be very careful with, no? So that is really amazing how much we could advance in these 20, 25 uh, years, no? So that we can apply this uh, new, lo new uh, knowledge for the best of, of, of conservation of that uh, uh, excellent water supplier that we have around here, no? Cuenca um, uh, has been a leader in the generation of that uh, knowledge, no? Not only for Ecuador, but at least for the, the tropical mountain uh, ecosystems, uh, the tropical Andes in general, no? And even that knowledge is uh, uh, also uh, relevant for other mountain regions in the world, as we can see here in this conference that people are coming from all over the world, no? I was at the university uh, at the start of my professional career here in the University of Cuenca, in the context of uh, cooperation between Belgian universities, especially Leuven and and uh, and the University of Cuenca, um, so at that that was the first phase in as, as an academic uh, uh, researcher, um, and then really my career evolved in a quite uh, different uh, way, and I'm very happy with that. No, after uh, leaving Cuenca, I uh, went to. Uh, a regional, um, international, regional uh, project of conservation of Paramo in Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru as a regional coordinator. And, and we started to work more on, on ecosystem services in, in, in the end catchment. I spent two years in Peru. And um, so that was like almost science, policy, science, application inter interface. Um, and then uh, eight years ago, uh, I was asked to lead the waterfront of Quito, the oldest waterfront in the in the world, really. You know, 20 year, 23 years old. It was already relatively consolidated, working financially, a solid uh, mechanism. Um, and we have been, we have had the opportunity to strengthen it, you no, know, to keep, to to let it grow more. But that's really operation application. No, it's the practice. So, uh, also uh, here, my presence in this conference is from that experience. So, since I was a researcher at the beginning, I, I, I think I can say that I understand what research is about, what the difficulties are. But then I, I went gradually into uh, the practice, into operation, trying to apply what, what I learned but also trying to give feedback to the research that what we really need as practitioners and as, a, as, as, as in charge of a very uh, concrete case of, well, you do whatever in the water sources of Quito that you think is necessary to conserve and restore them well. No? So then for that, of course, we do have information limits, knowledge uh, limitations, and 
that's my obligation now to give a feedback to researchers mm-hmm. that what we what is the most priority ag- uh, agenda um, for, for to be more effective. We have we have every time more support. People are more uh, environmentally aware. Uh, they are aware that water is under threat uh, because of climate change, because of other processes. No, but awareness is 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 growing, and that's of course excellent. Uh, but that also increases the the pressure on us that the resources that uh, we are able to use, the funding that we uh, receive, and that comes with this motivation of the awareness that we have to use that that funding in the best way. No. We cannot, uh, we cannot allow ourselves to 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 spend it on 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 not non-effective uh, interventions. We really no, need to to spend it in the best way, so that this motivation of of, of keeping funding this kind of initiative keeps coming, no, uh, and that's a very high responsibility. And in that same context, we we have sometimes lack of knowledge, you know, to be really more effective. So. Uh, I feel very well in that role to give some feedback here to all of the researchers.